there! Today, we'll begin looking at elliptic curve cryptosystems. We will describe some elliptic curves that have been standardized and are commonly used in practice, including P256, P384, and curve 25519. These elliptic curves are defined over the integers, modulo p, where p has a special form. We'll explain why the special form of p leads to faster implementations of elliptic curve cryptosystems. Elliptic curve cryptography was invented independently by Neil Koblitz and Victor Miller in 1985. RSA is a perfectly good public key encryption scheme and signature scheme. So one can ask, why elliptic curve cryptography? Why isn't RSA good enough? Well, RSA is based on the intractability of the integer factorization problem. As we've seen, the fastest known attack on this problem is the number field sieve, which takes sub-exponential time. On the other hand, the security of all elliptic curve cryptosystems is based on the intractability of the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem. As we saw in the last lecture, the fastest known attack on this problem is Pollard's algorithm, which takes fully exponential time. And so, the fastest known attack on the integer factorization problem is much faster than the fastest attack known on the elliptic curve discrete logarithm problem. And for this reason, elliptic curve cryptographic systems can generally use smaller parameters than their RSA counterparts, while maintaining the same level of security. More concretely, we saw that to achieve five security levels shown in the table, one can use RSA with moduli n with the given bit lengths. These bit lengths come from the estimates for factoring numbers of that bit length using the number field sieve. On the other hand, the bit lengths of the prime p in the elliptic curve cryptographic systems for achieving the five security levels shown in the table is just twice the security level. And this is because Polar's algorithm for finding discrete logarithms in an elliptic curve over a prime of, say, l bits is roughly the square root of 2 to the l. Hence, at higher security levels, such as the 128 bit level, one should use RSA with moduli that are 30 72 bits in length, whereas one can use ECC with the modulus P that is only 256 bits in length. And so, the smaller parameters for ECC typically yield faster and more compact implementations, and also have smaller public keys and smaller signature sizes. And this is why ECC can be advantageous over RSA. There are many elliptic curves to choose from. However, in practice, deployments of ECC generally use elliptic curves that have been standardized by some organization, such as the U.S. government's National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. The three most commonly used elliptic curves today are P256, Curve 25519, and P384. P256 is an elliptic curve chosen by the National Security Agency in 1998. It was intended for U.S. government use and was standardized by NIST. P256 has now been deployed widely around the world. This elliptic curve is defined over the integers modulo P, where P is this very nice 256-bit prime number. Notice that P is a sum and difference of just five powers of two. And notice also that the exponents of two are multiples of 32. P256 is the elliptic curve y squared equals x cubed minus 3x plus b, where b is this integer, a number between 0 and p minus 1. The elliptic curve parameter a in P256, P384, and P521 is minus 3. This value for a was chosen because it slightly speeds up the formula for point addition. The selection is without much loss of generality, 
since half of all elliptic curves over the integers modulo p can be transformed into an isomorphic elliptic curve with a equal to minus 3. The number n of points on the curve is this 256 bit prime. This point p was chosen as the fixed generator of the elliptic curve points. Since n is a 256 bit prime, Pollard's attack on the discrete logarithm problem in P256 takes approximately 2 to the 128 operations, and this is why P256 provides 128 bits of security. P384 is the second elliptic curve chosen by the National Security Agency in 1998 and standardized by NIST. The prime P is this nice 384 bit number. The defining equation is y squared equals x cubed minus 3x plus b, where b is this number between 0 and p minus 1. The number n of points is this 384 bit prime. p384 should be used in applications that require the 192 bit security level. p521 is a third elliptic curve chosen by the National Security Agency in 1998 and standardized by NIST. P is this nice 521-bit number, which is a Mersenne prime. P521 should be used in applications that require the 256-bit security level. Curve 25519 was selected by Dan Bernstein in 2005 and developed by Dan Bernstein and Tanya Longo and others. The prime P in curve 25519 is this very nice 255 bit prime 2 to the 255 minus 19. Since P is roughly 256 bits in length, curve 25519 should be used for applications that require the 128 bit security level. The equation of the elliptic curve is y squared equals x cubed plus 48662x squared plus x over the integers modulo p. Note that this curve is not in wire stress form y squared equals x cubed plus ax plus b. Instead, it's in so called Montgomery form, which has some very nice features that facilitate fast and secure implementations. I won't explain this any further. The number of points on the curve is almost a prime number. It's 8 times n, where n is this 253-bit prime number. You can find a very fast reference implementation of arithmetic in Curve 25519 at this website. This code was written by Dan Bernstein. Several countries now have their own suite of elliptic curves. For example, SM2 is an elliptic curve standardized by the State Cryptography Administration of China. The parameters of SM2 are similar to those of P256. SM2 offers 128 bits of security. CNSA 1.0 is a suite of cryptographic algorithms selected by the National Security Agency to provide vendors and IT users near-term flexibility in meeting the information assurance interoperability requirements for U.S. government. CNSA is intended to protect U.S. government data that has been categorized as unclassified, sensitive but unclassified, and classified. The cryptographic algorithms are AES-256 for encryption, SHA-384 for hashing, ECDSA with P384, and RSA with the modulus n of bit length at least 3072 bits for signing, and ECDH with P384, and RSA with the modulus n of bit length at least 3072 for key establishment. I'll note that the US government also categorizes some data as top secret. Such data is protected using cryptographic algorithms that are secret. Recall that the primes P used in curves P256 
and P384 have a nice special form. Namely, they're both sums and differences of just five powers of two. And the exponents of two are multiples of 32. These primes were selected because the operation of reduction modulo P can be easily and efficiently implemented on a 32-bit machine without doing an explicit long division. This is beneficial since long division is inherently bit-oriented, and thus it's somewhat tedious to implement in software. We would like a fast operation of reduction modulo P because elliptic curve point addition uses several modular multiplications and squarings. To illustrate this technique, I'll consider a reduction modulo the prime p equals 2 to the 192 minus 2 to the 64 minus 1 on a 64-bit machine. Note that the three exponents of 2 are multiples of 64. By a 64-bit machine, I mean a computer with built-in instructions for addition, subtraction, and multiplication of 64-bit integers. Here's the idea behind the reduction mod p algorithm. Suppose that a and b are integers between 0 and p minus 1. Since p is a 192-bit number, the bit lengths of a and b are each at most 192. We can divide the binary representation of a into three 64-bit words, a2, a1, and a0. And so a equals a2 times 2 to the 128 plus a1 times 2 to the 64 plus a0. And similarly for b. We'll first compute the product d of a and b. This can be done using ordinary base 2 to the 64 integer arithmetic. For this, one can use the built-in instructions for 64-bit integer multiplication and addition. Since a and b are each at most 192 bits in length, their product d has bit length at most 384 bits. Hence, we can divide the binary representation of d into six 64-bit words. And so d equals d5 times 2 to the 320 plus d4 times 2 to the 256, and so on, up to d0, where each di is a 64-bit integer. Our remaining task is to divide this number d by p to get the remainder. But I want to do this without doing an explicit long division. For this, I'll exploit the special form of p. I'll use the special form of p to write simple expressions for 2 to the 192, 2 to the 56, and 2 to the 320 modulo p. First note that 2 to the 192 is congruent to 2 to the 64 plus 1 modulo p. And this is because p is equal to the difference of these two numbers. Multiplying both sides of the congruence by 2 to the 64 gives us this congruence. Multiplying the second congruence by 2 to the 64 gives us 2 to the 320 is congruent to this expression. I can then replace 2 to the 192 by 2 to the 64 plus 1, giving us this expression. Now, c, which is d modulo p, can be written as an integer with six 64-bit digits. I'll then replace 2 to the 320, 2 to the 256, and 2 to the 192 by the above expressions to get this expression for c. I'll then note that this number is a 192-bit integer, which I can write as three 64-bit words, each word being d5. The second number can be written as three 64-bit words, d4, d4, and 0. The third number can be written as 0, d3, d3. And the fourth number can be written as a 192-bit number, d2, d1, d0. Thus, 
C can be computed by adding these four 192-bit integers and then reducing modulo P. This suggests the following algorithm for computing A times B modulo P. We'll first compute the 384-bit product D of A and B. The integer D is written as a sequence of six 64-bit words. We'll define the 192-bit integers T1, T2, T3, and T4, and then compute their sum C. If C is P or larger, then we will repeatedly subtract P from C until C is less than P. Finally, we'll return C. Note that the algorithm does not use any explicit long divisions. Note also that in step 3, C is less than 4P, and so in step 4, we perform at most three subtractions of P from C. Thus, the computation of D modulo P in steps 3 and 4 requires only three additions of 192-bit numbers and at most three subtractions by P. The elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman Key Agreement Scheme, ECDH, allows two parties to agree upon a shared secret key by communicating over an unsecured channel. In V8D, we'll first present a basic unauthenticated version of ECDH. The malicious intruder in the middle attack on ECDH illustrates the importance of authenticating the communications. Finally, I'll explain why Google started using ECDH in TLS in 2012. Goodbye!